Hello friends, welcome to Study Algorithms and today we would be solving a programming question on hacker rank. The problem we would be solving today is two characters. I am also including a link to the problem in the description below in case you want to check it out first. First, I will explain you the problem statement and then we will go over some sample test cases. Next, we will try to find a brute force solution to the problem and see why it is not feasible. Going forward, I will work with you to find an efficient solution to the problem followed by a dry run of the code. So, without further ado, let's get started. The problem states that if you are given a string, you need to remove as many characters as you can such that you are left with only two characters in the string and they don't appear simultaneously. Let us try to understand this problem with some sample test cases. So, according to the question, you are given a string that is formed of certain characters. Some of them are repeated and some of them may or may not be repeated. You are required to form a resultant output string that contains only two characters and none of them should be contiguous in the output string. This means that you cannot have a string like AAB or BAAB or DCCDEF because in these examples, AA is contiguous over here, AA is contiguous over here, and CC is contiguous over here. So, this is the first part that should be clear to you. Next, the question says that the output string should only contain two distinct characters. That means, A, B, C, D, or E, F, E, G. These are not valid outputs. Although they don't have contiguous characters, but ABCD is comprised of four distinct characters and EFE is comprised of three different characters. And hence, these two cannot be your results. So, for our first test case, we have this string. This has four distinct characters, B, A, E, and F. So, let us say I pick up two distinct characters as E and F. Then, the string I would be forming going from left direction is E, 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 F, and E. But as you know, our output cannot contain contiguous characters. And hence, this cannot be our answer. What happens if we choose A and F as our distinct characters? Going from the left direction again, our string would look something like A, F, and A. Now this string is valid and it has a length of 3. So you can see that there can be a lot of combinations possible. Out of all of these combinations, you need to find the longest string that you can form. In this particular test case, the longest string can be formed when you use B and A as your distinct characters. So going from the left direction, your string would look something like B, A, B, A, B. And it has a length of 5. And because I have solved this question before, I know that this is the correct answer. Similarly, let us quickly go over case number 2. The second input test case has the distinct characters as P, L, A, I, B, C. So, you can see that in the next case, we have 6 distinct characters. And that means it would have a lot of combinations possible. But since I have solved this question before, I already know the answer and that would come out when I choose my distinct characters as P and L. And the output going from the left direction would be P, L, P, L, P, L, P, L. And this has a length of 8. And this is my answer. So what we are doing here is we select two distinct characters and going from the left direction we only choose those characters and we keep on discarding all the other characters. At the end we get a string and it should satisfy our constraints. Now let us see how we can go about solving this problem. As I always say a good developer tries to come up with a brute force solution first because that can guarantee you if a solution to a problem exists. Check the link in the description below to know more about brute force algorithmic paradigms. 
So how would a brute force solution to this problem look like? One way to solve this problem would be to find out all the distinct characters. So in this case, my distinct characters are B, E, A and F. Since I know that the output string would contain only a subset of these characters. So one way to solve this problem would be I can form all sorts of different subsets of two characters. So one subset would be B E. Then another would be B A. Then one would be B F. Going forward, more subsets would look like E A. E F. And then another subset would be A F. Now. Using these subsets, I can try to form my strings. So when I choose B and E, going from the left direction, my string would look like B, E, B, E, 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 and B. For B, A, my string would look like B, A, B, A, and B. For B, F, it would be B, B, F and B. Similarly, so now I have all the different possible combinations of the strings that I can form with two distinct characters. Now we need to satisfy our constraints. So we see that in this case we have some contiguous characters and hence this is not a valid case. This is valid. This is again not valid. This is again not valid. This is not valid and this is valid. Now we can go on to calculate the lengths of all of these possible strings. So this has a length of 5 and this has a length of 3. Since we are interested in the longest string, this is our answer. But this brute force solution has a problem. In this string, we only had 4 distinct characters and with four different characters, I was able to find out so many different combinations and I had to compute so much. So you can imagine what would happen if my string length is of say 10,000 characters. Then I would certainly have a lot of distinct characters and I would just spend all of my time making all of these combinations and then evaluating the constraints on this. In fact, this brute force solution has a time complexity of order of n cube. So certainly we need to improve this approach. Let us see how we can go about doing that. This problem can be really simplified by using dynamic programming. If you fear dynamic programming, check the link in the description below to know more about dynamic programming algorithmic paradigms. And that should really help you out. The main point to note here is that when you are parsing this string, you need to make sure that you are not encountering repeating characters. And we need to somehow leverage this fact. So what I do here is I take my string, which is my actual input test case, and I find out all the distinct characters. So I know my distinct characters are B, E, A and F. Then I make a table for N cross N grid. So if this size is 4, I make a table of 4 by 4. And each of the rows and columns are different characters that I could find. So I need to find a way to keep a track of the characters that I am encountering. So let us just try to pass the string from the beginning. The first letter I get is B. As soon as I get a B, I fill in B in all of my column that has B and in all the rows that have Going forward, let us move to our second character E. Now I would fill the column of E. So I fill in E in the first row. In the second row, I already have a B. Since E can come after B and both of them are distinct, I cancel out B from over here and I put in an E. The third row is empty and the fourth row is also empty. Similarly, for my row E, I fill in E over here. I cancel out B and I put in E here and then in the fourth column I put in E again over here. 
moving forward i go on to a now i will try to fill in the row a so i fill in a in my row since b and a are distinct and they can come after each other i pull in a over here i can have a a after e so i cancel this and i put a a here then i put a a over here and in the column i can have a a after b so i put a a here i can have a a after e so i put a a here and in the last row i again put an a going forward towards our next character that is b again this is where things get a little interesting so i go over to the column b then i see that i can have a b again after a so i simply cancel this out and i put a b in over here now i go on to my second row and i see that b is already here i cannot have another b after b that would make it contiguous right so i cannot do anything about this and this results in a invalid case so i don't do anything about this cell and i simply flag it that means this case is no longer valid going forward i again look at the third row i can have a b over here and simply again in the fourth row i cannot do anything about it because i have already encountered a b so i again flag this cell now going over to the row b i can have a b over here the next cell has been discarded i can again have a b over here and the fourth cell is again invalid since i cannot have two b's so now you see we have started to eliminate some of the cases going forward my next letter is e so i start off with my column i can have a e here i can have a e here but as you see i cannot have e again after e so i would flag out this cell and again in the fourth row i cannot have a e after e so i flag out this cell similarly for the row e i can have an e i can have a e the next column has been skipped out and again in the fourth column i cannot have a e again after e so i flag out this cell as well so you see we are eliminating some of the conditions going forward next we have the letter e again so i again start off with my column e now i cannot have an e again that means this case has been voided and i would ignore it moving to the second row i already have a e so this case has been ignored again since the other rows have already been ignored i don't do anything about it i go over to my row e i see that okay this case is also not valid so i flag it then i see that this case is also not valid so i flag it which also makes sense because e and e does not satisfy the constraint of a problem it means that you cannot have two contiguous e's and you can see from the grid that e has been totally eliminated from the solution this looks like we are proceeding in the right direction going forward i move to the character f so i start with the column f since f can come after a i take this up the other two rows have been ignored and i can put f in the last row similarly for the row f i can have an f after a these two columns are ignored and the last column has been filled moving forward we go on to the letter e but since e has been completely eliminated we don't have to do anything about it moving on to our letter a now i again try to look at my grid now i cannot have an a after a so this cell has been eliminated i can have an a after b so i keep this the next row is eliminated and i can have an a after f so this row stays intact similarly for the row the first row has been removed i can have an a here the third column has been removed and i can have an a here doing this process for the one last time i pick up my character b 
I look at my column B, I can have a B here, and all of the three rows have been ignored. And with the rows, I can have a B here, and all of my other columns have been ignored. Now you have completely parsed the string, and you have eliminated all the cases that cannot be true. So now we look at all the valid test cases that are remaining. So we have this as a valid test case, we have this as a valid test case, this and this. To get your answer, you iterate over this entire table once and find out the lengths of all the valid cases. So this has a length of 5, this has a length of 5, this has a length of 3, this has a length of 3 and f is a single character which is not a valid case. So out of all of these cases, the maximum length you got was 5 and this is your answer. If you want to find out the string, you can just look in the cell and that cell would have the longest string that is possible. The time complexity of this solution was order of n and it works in a constant space. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. If this solution is clear in your mind, then it shouldn't be really hard to implement it. However, if you are still facing difficulties, I am including a link to the full text-based explanation and a code sample in the description below. To my audience and to my fellow programmers, if you have any other efficient ways to solve this problem, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I would really love to discuss them with you and find out new ways to solve this problem. If you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify these programming concepts for you. Until then, see ya.